Hey, Peter Pitchford here. Um, Jeff asked me to do a little blurb on the development of my act, who my inspirations were, and things like that. This is how I got into manipulation. Back when VHS tapes were still uh, the video preferred video format, I stumbled upon a three-disc set. I have since bought the DVDs. They're actually Jeff McBride's uh, uh, manipulation DVDs, his world-class manipulation and his art of card manipulation. And I started learning the knuckle-busting moves on there. Um, so to back up just a bit, my very first book that my father ever bought me well, when I was 16 years old was Now You See It, Now You Don't. The entire thing is all sleight of hand. And so by default, I became a sleight of hand person. And that's the way I think. I think very mathematically very technically, so when I stumbled upon the McBride DVDs, and, uh, or videos rather, they fit me perfectly and I couldn't get enough and, and so I uh, started practicing and I started training and things like that. Then I came across um, a routine manipulation series by Louis Ganson, uh, The Principles and Deceptions by Arthur Buckley. I came across these two wonderful works, which are no longer in print. Uh, Maurice Rookland's Spherical Sorcery and Recollections of a Pro, as well as um, Gaultier's Magic Without Apparatus. Okay? And so I began to study manipulation, oh, m many other books and, and works as well that I, I couldn't even go into, but, um, and it became my passion. And I started noticing um, the manipulation acts that I see were normally stand in one place and kind of robotically produce cards, and then do the same multiplying billiard ball move with the shell and doing this and swinging the hand back and forth like this. And it seemed rigid and um, although it was dazzling visually, it lacked emotional, uh, an emotional connection with the audience and there's the big question, who cares? After the visual part was over, it was very one dimensional. It wowed the audience visually, but it did not wow them emotionally or didn't um, um, touch them comedically. And so I began to think, I want to touch people on a deeper level than merely visually. How could this be accomplished? That was difficult. Um, I wanted to touch them emotionally. I wanted to make them care about the character. I wanted to make them care about the storyline. So my, my prototype of this years ago <clears throat> was merely a guy stumbles across a hat and gloves on stage and I had this backstory in my mind but I was having a difficult time communicating that to the audience. Uh, the, this hat and gloves on stage happened to be my hero which was uh, Cardini of course um, but the audience didn't know this and I was okay with that but I wanted to communicate that the hat and gloves were magical and when I put them on all this magic started happening. But it wasn't enough and I knew I needed to take that next step. I didn't know what to do next so I went to Jeff McBride and he took what was in my head and he helped flesh it out. He, he helped me develop a storyline and, and, and thus my, my act was kind of born at that point. Um, then I went to Mr. Bob Fitch and he directed my act as far as don't stand there, stand here, don't turn your head there, turn your head here, um, things like that. So um, Jeff asked me to talk about my inspirations, of course, uh, the great Cardini. Um, um, Jeff McBride helped me a lot. Bob Fitch helped me a lot. I owe a lot to Denny Haney, owner of Denny Lee Inley's Magic Studio, who has helped me tremendously. Um, I owe a lot to Charlie Fry, uh, who has been an inspiration to me in the way that he works, in his practice and rehearsal habits. And so uh, these men and others helped take my act from kind of a bare-bones skeletal manipulation act as a display of skill to this theatrical piece that connects with the audience emotionally. And the last time we performed this, uh, this piece, um, 11 people came up to uh, my wife and I individually and said, to cry at the end of your act and you touched us. Um, um, I, I, get, I get that all the time. And, and what magicians often miss is they think, well, because it's a manipulation act, it doesn't connect with a lay audience or a non-magician audience. Um, but to the contrary, I found my act very successful um, with, with non-magician audiences. And though they don't know who Cardini is, they still understand that the janitor sweeping up in this museum stumbles upon a great magician's display. 
and when I put on the gloves, the angel choir sings and the light shines down from heaven and the magic starts happening to me. This particular act has helped me to win first place at the Society of American Magicians International Stage Contest, uh, the Hofzinser Award for Excellence in Classical Magic. Uh, so thank you to my mentors, those who have influenced me in the art of magic. Um, thank you to my fans, uh, my friends, my supporters, people who helped me get where I am now. I'm excited about what the future holds. For a list of manipulation resources, I'd be happy to share um, what limited wisdom I have. I've been studying this for, oh boy, maybe 13 years now. And um, I'd be happy to share any resources I have. If you have questions about developing a manipulation act, I'd be happy to help any way I have. Um, feel free to contact me. And um, if you just want to shoot the breeze about magic contests, I've, I believe I've won over a dozen magic contests and um, would be happy to share my advice, um, the, the woes, <laughs> the triumphs, the um, hard work and stresses that come with preparing for one and performing in front of your peers and a panel of judges. Um, I'm here and I'd be more than happy to help you with that.